It's time for In the Paint, sponsored by Andrews Heating and Air Conditioning, ISU, Menards, Subway, Terre Haute Savings Bank, and Wabash Valley Sports. Now with the best hoop show in the Wabash Valley, Rick Semler and Megan McEwen. Good evening and welcome to In the Paint. Sectional championship games are now all set across the Wabash Valley. Over the next 20 minutes, we'll let you know what teams from the area will be playing for sectional titles on Saturday. Exciting time. Sports 10 drove all over the area this evening, bringing you eight different sectionals in Indiana. And then, of course, over in Illinois, oh, yeah. Lawrenceville had a chance to win their school's first sectional title in 20 years. We'll let you know how the Indians did later in the show. We'll start here in Indiana. I know many of you have seen it by now. Terre Haute South Tuesday won their first sectional game since 2010 thanks to an incredible game winning three at the buzzer from Jalen Manette. The Braves didn't play great in their sectional opener. Hopefully they could use the momentum from that big shot to get them back on track for a deep run in the state turning. South faced Brownsburg tonight in the semifinals at the 4A Terre Haute North sectional. Jalen Manette the rebound. Braves running and you know what's coming from Matt Dady. Another slam by the South senior. Good guys up 19-11. Diavia Washington played great for Terre Haute South. The stud sophomore, good from downtown. South led 35-23 at recess. Third quarter, D showed why those Division I schools are after him. Nice put back. He had a team high 20 points. South led by as much as 18 in this one. Brownsburg would get to within four after this shot goes off glass. But unlike Tuesday, South would stay calm. Love the passing by the Braves. Chase Dinkle scores on the assist from Dady. Braves superstar Jalen Manette seals the win for South in the fourth with one of his patented threes. Manette had 14. Terre Haute South wins 70-63. The Braves advance on to their first sectional title game since 2010. Next up for South is Avon tomorrow night. One year ago, no team in our area lived up to the Cinderella title better than West Vigo. The Vikings got red hot during the state tourney, rode it to their first sectional championship since 1990. The Vikings enter the postseason this year, looking to win back-to-back -back sectional titles for the first time in school history. West Vigo took on Northview in the first semifinal at the 3A Brown County sectional. Moves straight to overtime. Kaylin Shane, nice dime to Drew Lumsden. Northview takes a 56-54 lead. Ty Lottenslager had himself a night. The West Vigo junior, 30 points, 13 rebounds. He ties the game with a tough hoop. Northview retakes a lead on the sweet stroke of Quinton Hayes. His three gets nothing but the bottom of the net. Hayes had 26. Was Vigo down four? Corey Vickers, huge three to draw the Vikings to within one with 58 seconds to play. This was a great high school game. Hoosier hysteria at its best. Austin Sappingfield gives West Vigo a one point lead with less than 20 seconds to go. Hayes to the line with eight seconds to play. He'd hit both. Northview goes back up 64 63. West Vigo. Right here, Megan, one last chance to win it. Let's see it. Coach Baylor draws up a great play. Austin Sappingfield at the buzzer. Back iron. Oh. He got a good look. They got a great look. Yeah. That is just tough to take. But look at the celebration by Northview. Wow, what a ball game between these two rivals. Northview survives in overtime. 64-63 over West Vigo. The second semifinal game at the Brown County section on the host Eagles against Edgewood. I know Mustangs coach Dave Mahern likes this passing from his team. Almost everyone touches on the floor. Howard Shatton, nice move in the post for an Edgewood hoop. Brown County beats the Edgewood press with some nice passing of their own. Austin Hemminger with the easy layup. Look at the passing though by Edgewood. I tell you, this is fundamental basketball, Megan. Everybody is play. touching the ball. And it's Shatton again inside. Look at that. Beautiful. Inside, outside, outside, inside. Everybody touches it. I know Coach Mahern <laughs> is liking that. I remember his playing days. He never passed the ball. <laughs> Edgewood wins tonight 67 to 60. Edgewood faces Norview tomorrow in the finals. Get this the Mustangs 3 0 this season against the Knights. Can they do it for a fourth time, Megan? I don't know. It's hard to beat a team three times, let alone four times, as you well know. So we'll have that game <laughs> for you guys tomorrow night. But, you know, folks will tell you down in Vincent's that few things top beating Jasper. Oh, yeah. Not only did the Alice's look to beat Jasper tonight, but a victory by Vincent's Lincoln would also end their rival season. The two met at the 3A Jasper sectional. We're going to pick it up in the fourth quarter. Grant Oxman 
gets open, knocks down the three. Nothing but the bottom of the net for him. Jasper da or Vincent's down by six with under two to go. Then your boy Ethan Claycomb. He had 29 points on the night. My boy. 29. Look at him right here, right again. Great Gets high open. school career. Step back, Steph Curry, like three from him. <laughs> Lincoln trails by six with 30 seconds to go, but Jasper ends up beating Vincent's Lincoln 58-49. Well, we have three sectionals in the books. We have four more to get to after a quick timeout. Including stops at WRV, Lagodi, Fountain Central, and North Vermillion in the paint. We'll be right back.